Hey guys, so we're back again with an update on the Synology DS1819 Plus NAS build. In my previous video, we built up this NAS from scratch with an SHR2 RAID configuration and ran it over a 10 gigabit network connection using the Synology 10 gig network card in the NAS. I ran a couple of baseline tests at that time using both a 4K video edit in DaVinci Resolve locally on my iMac Pro, as well as using a basic software disk read and write testing utility by AJA Video Systems. The results in that test were okay, but I wasn't super impressed with the resulting throughput. As a reminder, we were achieving a roughly 450 megabyte per second throughput to the NAS with the SHR2 Synology proprietary RAID setup. Also, if we recall, the Synology DS1819 Plus is rated to deliver 2045 megabytes per second read and 650 megabytes per second write. So we're kind of far from those numbers in that last test. At the time, I wanted to see if we could reach for a higher throughput by starting over again, but with a RAID 10 configuration on the NAS, which theoretically should allow for better read-write performance with the disks uh, versus the SHR2, which uses a variation of RAID 6. But since RAID 10 requires an even number of drives, since half of them are needed for backup, I needed to wait to order the sixth drive to continue this testing, since I only had five at the time. And that's where we last left off. We now have this drive, I've already installed it, I removed the old SHR2 volume and set it up again as a RAID 10. The Synology DSM software has already performed all the parity checking, which took about 16 hours to complete with the six drives in the array. Um, and that has now left the RAID 10 array in its optimal state, so we're ready for the testing. So the first question is, does the RAID 10 configuration make a significant difference in read-write performance over the SHR2 using the same AJA test as before? The short answer is maybe a little. Let's take a look. So we're back at the computer and we're ready to test this uh, RAID 10 throughput here with the same configuration in the AJA Video Systems utility test as we had it set before. Basically a 4K uh, video frame size and a four gigabyte uh, test file size. So let's hit start and see what we're getting. So it definitely starts out higher with the writes, you know, much closer to 600 gigabytes or megabytes per second, sorry, uh, ending up around uh, the low 500s and the reads start at the very high 400s and end up somewhere in, you know, the lower uh, to mid 400s, which I think was almost on par with what we saw before in terms of read speed with the SHR2. The writes are definitely, I think, a little bit higher um, than we saw before. Um, you know, maybe around 450 megabytes per second here. Um, I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's just not that much higher. It's maybe a modicum higher than what we saw before. So with a one gigabyte transfer size, we're seeing a very significant improvement with the read performance at generally well over a thousand megabytes per second. When running the same AJA test over the 10 gig network connection to the Synology NAS in a RAID 10 configuration, we're now seeing what seems like a modest increase in at least the write speed using the same four gigabyte file size that I had used in the original AJA file transfer test. So it looks like we're getting a little closer to 500 megabytes per second versus the previous 450 megabytes per second on average. The read performance is maybe slightly better, but not significantly approved from what I can see here using the software as a baseline test. One thing I did notice is if we switch to a one gigabyte file size, we're now seeing closer to 1000 megabytes per second or close to 8.5 gigabits per second throughput. That seems pretty decent. However, I did not run this test at 1K file size with SHR2, unfortunately, and that would have been a good thing to test and run. But there's a few more things to note here with regard to how the actual network testing is being done. I did discover during this round of testing that it's not just the read-write performance that we need to take a look at, but also the network speed and network throughput. I needed to see what kind of raw speeds we're getting over my 10 gig connection here, so I downloaded and installed a software tool called iPerf on my Mac, or actually iPerf 3. I also installed this on the Synology. iPerf is basically a Synology command line utility that is commonly used to test network speed. 
Now to keep this video shorter, I'm not gonna go into how to set all that stuff up. There's plenty of good YouTube videos that cover how to do this already. And it wasn't all that hard to get set up. But you do need to know a little bit on how to do basic uh, system commands in the terminal, as well as how to use the SSH command to remotely log into your Synology NAS, because you do have to run iperf there as well as from your, your computer uh, to do the test. From the other research I've done on YouTube, this speed seems kind of on par with what others are getting with Synology over a 10 gigabit connection. I'm not quite sure what the delta is caused between these iperf speeds that we're seeing here and a full 10 gigabit per second of throughput, but I'm guessing it's likely due to the Synology CPU or the constraints of the NAS itself. Uh, or perhaps even the 10 gigabyte, uh, gigabit card. So let's assume for the moment that five to seven gigabits per second between the iMac Pro over the network through the switch into the Synology NAS is pretty good. I also realized something else, which is we need to do this test again with setting something in your network configuration called jumbo frame sizes. This is the network packet configuration in terms of how things are delivered between everything in the chain. You can think of these jumbo frames as a little bit like increasing the cart size carrying everything across the network. Now without jumbo frames being set, I was only getting around one to one and a half gigabits per second. So this was a pretty important discovery and may have invalidated, unfortunately, the testing that I did in the last video with SHR2 because the jumbo frames weren't properly set. Jumbo frames have to be configured on everything in the chain between your computer and the NAS itself. In my case, this was done on the iMac Pro here, uh, in the system preferences, uh, also on the Ubiquiti switch itself via the port settings, and on the Synology itself, which is performed in the DSM management software under the LAN setting for the 10 gigabit, uh, gigabit input connection. Now, with all three of these settings now properly configured to 9,000 size jumbo frames, this resulted in the five to seven gigabit per second throughput that I'm now seeing with iPerf. So uh, the, I think before the default frame size was set to something like 1500. Now I'm sure it might be worth experimenting with different frame sizes, but 9,000 is the general maximum the settings would allow. And it's also a number that I read was recommended for doing video editing. So we're gonna go with that 9,000 size for now. Okay, so where do we stand? At this point, I am not completely convinced that RAID 10 is the reason that we're seeing any modicum of improvement in the throughput testing with the AJA disk utility. Also, the results are really not that significantly improved with the RAID 10 configuration over the previous SHR2 configuration. Now that the network throughput is better optimized with jumbo frames, I wanna retry the SHR2 RAID configuration, but with both a four gigabyte and one gigabyte file size in the transfer test to really see how much difference there is between these two RAID configurations. Or are the improvements more due to the jumbo frame network packet setting? I'm not really certain why we don't see more significant benefit with RAID 10, because mathematically speaking, RAID 10 in theory should be up to three times faster with disk writes and modestly faster with reads as well. Further, RAID 10 does use a lot of additional disk space resources to achieve its redundancy, taking out half of your total storage available for this redundancy. I'm going to try this SHR2 RAID configuration just one more time to get a better baseline of testing between it and the RAID 10 setup now that we have jumbo frames engaged and with both a 4K and 1K file size for the transfer. If the results are close to what we've seen just now with the RAID 10 setup and jumbo frames, then I'm gonna be inclined to just stay with the SHR2 setup. It's much more flexible. And then we can try some of the video editing tests to see how it feels to work across the NAS and determine an editing workflow with 4K video. So let's blow this rate up one more time and build the SHR2 back up with the six disks we have now in this jumbo frame optimized network environment. Okay, so we're back on my iMac Pro with a second build of an SHR2 configuration. Only now we have six, six terabyte drives uh, instead of five where we had previously. And this is now yielding close to 22 uh, terabytes of usable storage. Uh, versus the approximately 16 or, or so terabytes of usable storage that we had before with the RAID 10 configuration. So let's start by rechecking the read-write performance to the NAS with the AJA disk utility in the same configuration as before. Uh, mainly, we're sending the same uh, size resolution file here, the 3840 by 2164K file, the same four gigabyte test frame 
uh, the same codec, etc., etc. So all of those settings are the same. So let's see what we get. So the writes are looking pretty good here off the bat. It looks like we're getting something in the neighborhood of, you know, high 400s. That's pretty consistent with what we had before, which is excellent. And the reads. Now, the reads to me so far look like they're a little bit less than what we had before. Because I believe in the previous test we were seeing in the high 400 megabytes per second. Uh, nice and consistent on the writes, but the reads, that last number there looks slow. Let's just run it, let it run one more time. Yeah, this is definitely slower on the reads. Now, I'm not sure why the reads would be slower. I built this volume the same exact same way as before using a, a BTRFS uh, file system, as you can see here to kind of down below. Um, I've also gone ahead and I, I did start to use the NAS a little bit. I have to full disclose here, I needed to use uh, some, some of the space for a project. Um, so uh, since I had built it, I did put, put just a couple of files on the NAS, really not too, too much else. Uh, I did put in some services uh, that I have paused, things like Time Machine and Backblaze, just to kind of get those things up and running for protection and safety. Um, but those services are all canceled, or, you know, they're paused here, so there shouldn't be any Thing that's was taxing the CPU beyond um, the testing here. If I hit stop, we should see the resource monitor go to zero. It usually takes just a minute, and then it kind of just falls off. Uh, and it should go to actually to zero. There we go. So there's nothing happening with the NAS uh, other than this test. So reads are a little bit slower than what they were before. Um, and if anyone has any thoughts on why that might be, uh, I'd love to hear it. Um, but let's try the one gigabyte file size, or one gig, gig file size, here we go. Nice, fast uh, writes and excellent reads. That's really fantastic on the read. So um, that's not giving me any concern. And uh, we didn't test the one gig on the five disk SHR2 config, but we did test it with the RAID 10. And I believe this is pretty close to what we were seeing with the RAID 10. So these are really close speeds between this SHR2 configuration and the RAID 10. So what about 4K video editing? That was one of the main reasons I had wanted to put these videos together, which is to determine if editing 4K footage directly from the NAS was going to be possible. So if you remember in the previous video, we ran some extensive tests that were very specific using a 4K DaVinci Resolve project. Now I've moved over the footage and the files that we worked with previously on the local SSD of the iMac Pro over to the NAS so we can get a sense of what it's actually like to edit 4K footage across a 10 GBE network. Now since the part one video took a long time to run all those tests, I'm gonna go and run those tests separately offline now and then come back with the results compiled for us to go over in a little spreadsheet. And we are back with the results of these tests that we ran before. In this middle column here, we have the times that it took in the previous video to run these four tests. The first one to load the project um, from scratch, get DaVinci Resolve up, load the actual project and all the files and everything. Um, took 31 seconds. Same thing with the data, the footage data um, on the NAS took 33 seconds. So there was not much difference there. Um, both of the projects do play back in real time, but I have a note here that we have to talk about later with regard to where the cache uh, is operating from. The time it takes to recompute that same exact clip, uh, there was a lick of transition between Two, uh, two, shot, two, uh, two shots um, where I had a, you know, this kind of a, a little bit of a warp effect and a noise reduction effect. Um, previously on right, working right off of the SSD drive, took 56 seconds. It took 58 seconds on the SHR, SHR2 NAS setup. Um, that's not surprising because these files are really, at this point, they should be kind of working off of the cache. So uh, that didn't seem to have much of an impact and that's, that's expected. Now, the time to render the deliverable will touch uh, and run across the network, for sure. And I was very pleased to see that there wasn't a whole lot of difference in the render time. Um, the first time we ran this long test, it's about a two minute, I think 48 second clip, full 4K, took 12 minutes and 16 seconds across my uh, rate to the local SSD drive. But going over to the NAS uh, took just a few seconds more. So it uh, took 12 minutes and 22 seconds. So there really wasn't a very significant result uh, in terms of the difference 
uh, in terms of just this workflow using the same tests that we ran um, locally versus running these same things on the NAS. So that was really great to see. Also, I took some new 4K footage that I just shot and I attempted to work and edit it together completely from scratch across the network. I'm happy to say that it actually worked rather well. I didn't see any degradation in performance or in the actual workflow working directly off the NAS and that was really cool. Now, since the last video, I put a bit more thought into what's going to be the most efficient way to edit footage over a 10 GBE network and how to manage this footage, the databases, cache directories, etc., from an editing workflow standpoint. Now you could put all of these things over on the NAS, but it's not absolutely necessary and neither is it the most efficient way to work. For example, the databases appear to actually be quite small since they contain mostly editing information for the cut and settings for the project. The total size of about 20 different databases that I currently have is currently taking less than, uh, less than one gigabyte combined. Now the cache directory can get quite large, but that's very easy to purge and recover that space if needed. Plus, we do want the cache to work as efficiently as possible. So I'm planning to keep that locally for now and just have the heavy footage as well as the final renders over on the Synology NAS. The last thing I'm gonna mention quickly is that we all know that Synology or any NAS for that matter is not a solution for backups. You will need another solution for that. What I've got going on right now for mine is I back up all the computers in the house to the NAS via Time Machine because we have mostly Macs in our house. And I'm currently using the Backblaze S2 solution to back up the NAS to the cloud. It works really fast, at least over my network connection. Uh, it has a great interface and it gives me a great peace of mind that if one of my computers happens to fail, I have a backup. If the NAS fails, I have a backup in the cloud. So definitely let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see me do a short video on how I set all that up. The Synology and Backblaze uh, companies have worked together to make this configuration really seamless right in the software panel uh, of the DSM software. So in conclusion, with these tests, completed for both RAID 10 and SHR2 configurations over an optimized network with Jumbo frames, I'm gonna go with the SHR2 configuration for my RAID. This is gonna be more advantageous for me simply because I've established that 4K video editing is achievable with this configuration and I'm going to have more usable storage as well as greater flexibility with that storage for expansion. And lastly, I'm also going to have better fail-safe protection if more than one drive were to simultaneously fail because RAID 10 cannot recover from two failed drives in all cases. So I hope that with this test done here that it helps to inform you a little bit with regard to setting up your Synology NAS, maybe help you decide on a future Synology purchase, or even with optimizing the NAS and network that you may already have. I have to say that so far with my purchase, I'm pretty happy. Uh, this video was not sponsored in any way by Synology, um, and these are my totally my own opinions. Um, this unit and the DSM software setup have been relatively easy. Uh, I'm glad to finally have a much more sophisticated uh, editing workflow where I can tap into a much, much larger storage pool when working with bigger projects. As always, I am totally open to any ideas or suggestions that any of you might have to help improve this workflow um, or how to improve performance of a NAS over 10 GBE. So please do leave comments down below. I do read all of them uh, on any ideas or suggestions that you have or any ideas for things that we could try in a future video. If you like this video, it would be totally awesome if you could take the time right now to drop a like and hit the subscribe button down below so that you can be notified on future tech videos that I create. I love the engagement with you all in YouTube land and it really gets me pumped to grow this channel from here. Finally, I do have a few Amazon affiliate links down below. So if you happen to be in the market for a Synology NAS or any of the equipment that we've talked about here in these videos, please consider using these links to make your purchase. You don't have to, of course, and there's no increased cost to you whatsoever for using them. But if you do decide to click through to Amazon to make a purchase, then I do receive a very small commission for the effort to create informational content like this. You can kind of think of the YouTube affiliate links as a great way to donate to a channel without having to spend any additional money for a purchase that you were planning to make anyway. Uh, and of course, I would be super grateful because it really does help to support my channel. So that's it for now. I hope you're having an awesome day wherever you are and that you and your loved ones are healthy and staying safe. I appreciate you and I will catch you in the next one.